Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my PHP message board tutorial. In this, I'm going to show you how to make the login part for your website, which is right here. I've gotten a lot of requests on how to create a CAPTCHA system that is nice and compact and yet still works and functions just as well as the other one. You're going to learn that. You're going to learn how to verify and secure user IDs, passwords. I'm also going to show you how to make secondary token IDs that are going to be stored in separate cookies and a whole bunch more. So let's get into it. Basically, what I have here on the left side of the screen is a lot of the things you've seen in the previous part of this tutorial. And if you've found yourself here somehow without seeing those parts, definitely check those out first, otherwise you will be confused. And also, I know you should always keep your styling and any external scripts external rather than having them on the page. I'm just doing this so that I am able to keep everything pretty much on one page. And then down here, we have the login part that you saw in the previous tutorial. And then I'm, of course, going to add to that. First, to get this CAPTCHA system here nice and compact, what we're going to have to do is go into the styling area. And I often do this whenever I'm writing code. I'll put in little comments on exactly what I need to put where. And if you want to style now, the CAPTCHA system. This is how you do it. And all this code's available in the underbar below. There's a link and you should definitely get it because that will save you an immense amount of time. Okay, so we just go recaptcha image, which is this image over here, and we define a width for it. And I'm going to put 185 pixels because that just works for me. And a height of 28.5 because that just ended up also working for me. And under border, I'm just going to put one pixel solid Gainsborough because this was a default. So that's going to make that image a little bit smaller. And then you have to come in here, do a little bit more styling. This comes from reCAPTCHA itself. And that is all you're going to have to do for that part of the styling to make this a little and tiny. I'm sure you understand everything that I did there. It's quite simple. And then in the script area, you need to come in here and do a couple other things. And here, you're able to perform additional styling inside here. You have to define that your theme is going to be custom, custom theme, underscore widget. And like I said before, this is all stuff that is part of the reCAPTCHA system. So that's the scripting that needs done there. And now what I'm going to do is go down into this PHP section and verify all the user input for the user IDs and passwords and verify that the account is activated and a whole bunch more. If, again, I'm checking if submitted is set for true, just like I've done previously, that's what's going to trigger this code to start running. Then I'm going to provide a security check to make sure the user ID is valid and doesn't carry any characters inside of it that could be potentially harmful. And I'm going to do that by performing a regular expression check, put in my delimiter, Caret signifies the beginning of this string. I'm going to say that I will accept a through z and lowercase a through z, and zero through nine, and no spaces, and eight to 20 characters in length. And then it's going to end, and that is it. And then I'm going to call strip slashes on it, trim out any white space, which there shouldn't be any. But like I said, a lot of times I just do stuff and double and triple check everything. It's just part of my paranoia. And then I'm going to scrub this user ID again by calling escape data, which is located in my header.php file. And we went over that previously. So it's just going to send it over there, clean it up, make sure everything's all nice and tidy. Now, if it did not pass, what I'm going to do is set u equal to false. And then later on, whenever I check if u is false, it comes back positive, then that means they messed up. And then I send them an error message. And then here, and you should define this outside again of this page. But like I said before, just to keep everything neat and tidy, I'm defining it inside. Oops, made an error. I gotta put double quotes because it's contained in single quotes. And then I wanna close that off. And then I'm gonna perform a security check on the password. And of course, this should be heavily commented, and the code that I have linked to in the bottom is heavily commented. I'm just gonna copy and paste that because this is going to be very similar. Basically, I have to come in here, change user ID to pass, and then I have to change right here to pass, and then down here, please enter a valid, and then this is gonna be password instead of username. And now I have to do the PHP code for the CAPTCHA system, and I'm gonna first set CAPTCHA check, just like I used you here. Oh, and I'm also gonna have to change these to P. Just like I did this right here, that's what this guy is. I'm gonna set it originally for one, and then I'm gonna scroll this up so you can see it all. Then you're gonna enter your private key you got from Google, so private key, whatever that is, RESP, and then private key, and this is all part of the CAPTCHA system, and you should type everything in exactly the way I have these things defined here, because this is going to go off and verify that the CAPTCHA was set up right, and the information was entered right by whoever is using your website. 
So you would just enter it in there like that or go and copy and paste it because it's going to be the same every single time. And then this checks if what they entered is valid. And again, this is part of the CAPTCHA system. It's going to be the same. And then here, this is custom. This is where you have to enter exactly what's going to happen. If it isn't, now I'm just going to type this in and then close that off right like that. And then, of course, if they entered it incorrectly, I want to take this guy right here and jump down here and set this to zero or false or whatever you want. doesn't really matter. False or zero. And then close that off. Then what I'm going to do is query the database and verify that the username, the CAPTCHA system, and everything was set right. And how I do that is go if dollar sign u or username and p and well, let's just paste that in there and chop that end off. Now you can see exactly where that is coming into when I was putting falses and trues and zeros and all those things in there. So if they all came back positive, that means the user ID, the password, the CAPTCHA system, everything was done right. So now I can issue a query and realize that all this information is right. So I'm going to say to MySQL, I want you to return my user ID, my first name, last name, email address, username, password, active. And those are all things that are inside of the MySQL database, which is right here. You can actually see all these things that I'm talking about right here on the screen. So if we zoom in a little bit, see? User ID, username, password, email, token ID, first name, last name, active. Is the account active? If it says null, that means it is active. If it has this long string of numbers in here, that means it is not. So that's what I'm getting there. So then I have to say from, and the name of the table is users, and then I'm gonna say where, username is equal to, right like that, and password, is equal to, and I have to run it through that SHA function, which is going to encrypt it so that I never know what their password is. And then da 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 da. So there's the query that I want to issue. So now I have to issue the query and see if it came back positive. And I do that with the MySQL query function, which only accepts one query at a time, which is also a security feature. And if that query did not work, I shot back an error, I'm going to issue that error right there on the screen. And then if, I'm going to check here that the number of affected rows from the last query that I issued is going to be equal to 1, which it always should be. If it isn't, I would also make a note in the log file or have an email sent or something that somebody's messing around with your system because if they're entering a user ID and password, there's only one row it could possibly affect unless somebody ran a query through here that was potentially dangerous. And then I'm going to take all of the results and I'm going to store them in an array called row. And then you do this to free up resources. Now I'm going to check if they activated the account or not. Remember I said if it's activated, then the value of active, which I can get right like this, say six. If we go up to the query, user ID is zero. First name is one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I'm doing is checking the value of active. And I'm saying if it's not equal to null, then that means they haven't activated their account. So I need to do something about that. What I'm going to do is direct them to a different web page. And how you do that is exactly by using this header function here. And I'm putting in localhost because this is on my site or my computer. And of course, you would have it go somewhere else, unless you're testing it on your local computer. And then I'm closing my database, and I'm closing this script, and they're going to be redirected then. So that is going to handle if they haven't activated their account. And then I'm going, because in the header PHP file, I decided to use sessions. What I'm going to do, so that I know when the person comes back that they are already logged in to the account, I'm going to take the value stored in the first position from that query that I performed, and I'm going to save in a variable first name, the first name that they entered. That's all this is. And then I'm going to store user ID equal to row, and the value that's stored in the fourth placeholder inside of that array. And then I'm going to create a secondary, or what is called a token ID, and what this is going to do, it, it helps fight off what's called session hijacking, which I talk about in the PHP security tutorial. Basically, it just stores inside of a cookie another random number, and then it is stored on their computer, so it makes it hard for somebody to get onto somebody else's computer and steal it. So this is another layer of security. And then I'm going to run another query here. We'll call this query 2. Remember, if it's an uppercase, that means it is a MySQL command or a SQL command, or whatever you want to call it. And if it's lowercase, that means it is not. And I'm going to set the value of token ID to whatever it is. And I'm going to set the username to whatever they have stored in the session under user ID. And then I'm going to run this query. 
And just so you understand, this right here is the token ID right there. See, this one hasn't been logged in yet. This one has been logged in. And you can see that this token ID changes whenever the person logs in again and again and again. Again, it just helps people avoid session hijacking because most people do not do that. And then I'm going to set the token ID in the session as well. And then on top of that, I'm going to regenerate the session ID number again. And then I'm going to redirect the user just like we did before. And how about I just go up here and copy in that. So here I'm going to send them to the login page and everything else there is the same. And I just want to close this off. Else, and that else comes from not this guy here, but this guy up here. So that means either no rows were changed whenever we issued this query or more than one row changed. So we want to handle that problem. And we're just going to print out the screen. Break statement, paragraph, font color is equal to red, size is equal to plus one. And just print that out. Close that off, close off my paragraph tag. And then anytime an error is triggered, we want to shut down our database connection and shut down the script altogether. And that is the end of the submission area. And now we're down here. This is actually the end of the PHP for that part. So now we're down in the body area. And like we went over in the last tutorial, what this is doing is it's checking to see if first name is set using sessions. And you saw just above exactly where I'm checking to see that first name is set. And if it is set, we're going to display different results over here. So if it is set with first name, that means they're logged in. So what I want to do is I want to display all the things in reference to what it would look like if a person was indeed logged in. So I'm obviously not going to have log in being shown. And just so you see it, let's go over here. So there's everything entered in there. And then I'm going to hit log in. And you can see Welcome Derek shows up. And it only gives me the option of either logging out or changing my password. It doesn't give me any other options because it didn't make sense to give me any of them. So here what I'm going to do is actually, and there is nicer ways to do this, but I can't really think of anything I could do here if I'm trying to keep everything all in one place. I would normally do this in a separate page because it can get sloppy. Here what I'm doing, because I'm, I'm starting to do more complicated things, I'm actually going to have to go inside here, clear browsing data. And all I just did was I just deleted the cookie. So when I log back in, see, it's asking for a login because I deleted the cookie and all of the session information so it doesn't think I'm logged in. And all I'm doing here is just putting in all of the information you see on the right side of the screen. So user ID, I'm putting in the input text box. Password name is equal to pass. Size is equal to 16 pixels. That's just so everything lines itself up, but I'm going to make my maximum length equal to 30. So they can put up to 30 characters in there. Actually, I'm going to leave this as text so that it's easier to read and to user ID. And then I'm just going to copy this paste it in there, and then change this in the password section to password and name as pass. And then leave everything else exactly the same. And I can take that out also. Okay, so I'm just echoing all this information out to screen depending upon whether they're logged in or not. That's all I'm doing here. It's not really that complicated. I'm going to go echo and do pretty much exactly the same thing. But here I'm just going to copy and paste this from what Google provided on its CAPTCHA page. So you can either copy and paste this out of my link that I have in the underbar, or you can go to Google and do it the roundabout way. It's totally up to you. And I'm just going to paste all that information in there because there's no point in typing it all out. It's the same every single time. And all this does is puts these links in here and all this other information. That's it. Handles all the CAPTCHA stuff. And of course, you wouldn't want that comment there. But everything else is pretty much perfect. And then you'd have to come down here and finish off with a double quote and a semicolon. And then the only thing left to do after that is come in here and go echo div align is equal to left. And this is going to create your submit button. Login will be on the button. And then we'll close the div, create a hidden field, name equal to submitted. This is going to notify my code above that they have submitted information that needs processed. And then close off the form and then register.php. And this is just a link, it's gonna be set for register. And then a h reference is equal to forgot password, which is gonna allow them to retrieve their password. And I went over that in a previous tutorial as well. And that is the whole shebang. Of course, we're gonna to wanna to close this off. And I'm also gonna to wanna to come in here and put single quotes in here, or I could backslash them. But I'm just gonna save them as single quotes because that's just easier. And that's the whole shebang. That's the whole, all the code. That's everything that you need to create this guy over here. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.